Well, it appears the Guardians and some of you have not listened to our Let's Make a Deal episode recently. You should get on that. But for the first time, what I feel like is weeks, we actually have an episode that we can talk about Guardians-related news. We haven't done that in a while. So let's do that. You are Locked On Guardians. Your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Now new customers join today, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if you place your first bet of $5 or more. Visit FanDuel slash locked on to get started today. I'm having some anxiety. I got way too many tabs open because we got so many random things to talk about <laughs> on today's show. I kind of wanted to just sit here and eat cookies at the start uh, just because I know people love the sounds of mouth noises when you're doing a podcast. Uh, It's almost (laughs) as much as they like us interrupting each other. But uh, you and I have diametrically different takes on on Cookie Elliot. You, I I guess I'm speaking. Here's my view. I'm going to do the the, the sour take. Like, I'm glad he's back. We've been saying for a while, like, hey, bring him back last season. He was not good last year. He was okay the year before that. And then he wasn't good the years before that. He's going to turn 37 in uh, about a month and a half. I just, I don't have much... You know, I see this as a guy who has a you know less than one percent chance of of helping the major league team this year because a lot of thirty seven year olds. I mean, who bounces back at thirty seven? I, I know Justin's going to get into the how he's he's attempting to, and there's reasons for hope, and there's reasons why I could end up looking like a moron in a few months. But I, I look at this as a great story. Of course, you go out and do it. Likely to go to AAA and maybe eventually move into a coaching role before the year is done. I mean, I think that all is very positive. There's a lot of outcomes here. I don't think we really know what this is going to be because, like you said, he was not good last year, but he's attempting to make some changes to his pitching profile. So um, he was one of many players that pitched at Drive Lines Pro Day uh, two weeks ago, I think it was, a week ago. If, if Drive Line made everyone good, why is Casey Weathers never in the big leagues? It was like one of the first people. To, you know, it's like sometimes I think we put too much value in Drive Line. I mean, the programs work. I mean, there's a reason the people that work there's there value. get hired. They're smart. Yeah. No, there's, there's value. value. And, and that's not to say every case is going to work, but there are some things you can look at from his pro day here. Like, so if you're just looking on Baseball Savant or anywhere else, um, you can see that a lot of his pitch mix has not worked. I mean, if you go back to his days with Cleveland, even when he was actually good with Cleveland, his forcing fastball was pretty awful. Like, he could throw 95, 96, but his fastball would get hammered. He it got really, results though. It was a, I saw a positive four, positive five at points. It, at least, yeah. But if it, you look at it, everything else set it up to year. work. Yeah, I, he used it as a setup pitch, and he had to use it to get to the rest of his stuff, which was much better than his fastball. But it looks like he's maybe attempting to shelve that because it's been a terrible pitch for years now. Um, now he's he's also scrapping his slider, so. Uh, the slider he threw the pro day is more of a sweeper. It's slower with more horizontal break, which is a different from his slider. He's been using his whole career. The changeup was still good last year. Um, he's adding a cutter and he's using his sinker a little more. So he didn't throw a single forcing fastball at his pro day. And then the spin rates on the sweeper and the vertical and the horizontal break all look really good, at least data wise. So we'll see how it plays. The velocity was, you know, only 90 to 92 in terms of the fastball stuff, but it's also only January. So, who knows where he's really at? I do think this is really more of a a mentorship, a feel-good story, possibly, obviously, because everyone likes Cookie and the organization loves him. And and really, if you look at the roster, there's not a lot of guys left that went, were here when he was here. Like, who's left? You have Shane Bieber, Tristan McKenzie, and Jose Ramirez, I think. Josh Naylor was here at the end of 2020. Like, that was it. Those are the only guys really left on this team that were here when um, – Carlos Carrasco last pitch for Cleveland, which was 2020. So I'm sorry, James Karen Jack was on that, on that list. So, and I think Nick Sandlin was up in 2020. Was he not? Am I wrong with that? Was he up in 2020? Mm, Might have been one of his. I think he was at the alternate site. Yeah. So there's not a lot of guys left, but it's a young pitching group. And, you know, there's, you know, is insurance in case Beaver McKenzie gets hurt. 
Is it insurance if Bieber gets traded? People are going to ask that question. I don't think he's insurance for any of that, at least not, not a trade. Um, I think there's a possibility he goes to AAA. He doesn't, doesn't seem to have an opt-out in his deal, so he could go to AAA and, and serve his depth and kind of work on what he, and maybe the new pitches he's been working with, see what happens there. And then, you know, because we've talked about, if something happens to any of the five starters, I mean, you have Bieber and McKenzie who both were hurt most of the year last year, and, you know, Bieber was hurt most of the year in 2021. You're you're reaching down for, you know, Cantillo, Gaddis, is Curry in the bullpen? Is he in AAA? We don't know. You know, those are those are who you're reaching out AAA for. And if it's a short stint, if it's two or three starts with with you know Curry or Gaddis, that's fine. But if anything longer happens, you know, especially early in the season, there's a lot of unknown with Joey Cantillo. You don't know what you want to do there. You're not going to get Daniel Spino back till midseason at best, and even then, you don't know what he's going to look like. So. There's, there's an opportunity there for Carrasco to work his way back to the big leagues if he doesn't make the team out of spring training. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I'm not going to say there's a 0% chance because I don't believe that. Maybe the party is wanting to believe that it's not a 0% chance because of the story and what Carrasco could provide to this team and to just for you know having something to root for, I guess. But I don't know. There's reasons to, to hope. I mean, like I said, the stuff at Driveline looked interesting. He is trying to change it a little bit. If anybody is is good at you know working with guys, he didn't walk a lot of guys last year. Look at the walk rate; it's not like he it was still was in the blue guys left and right uh, relative to his yeah. everything else. And so it wasn't good. Like he was bad at everything. He was he had he the was. worst batting average. They hit him hard. Everything was squared up on the changeup. Was solid. It's just guys at age thirty seven don't get better. Like on a very basic level, at age thirty seven, guys don't get better as much as we want him to be a good story, and we love what he was in his time here. I think like. If this was anyone other than Carlos Carrasco, if you were implying like giving him an extended look at age 37, you'd be annoyed at the Guardians for doing it, right? Like that's oh, probably for sure. Yeah. I mean, even even Corey Kluber, I think, would be a different story here. I mean, I, I am basing some of this off of what he did at Drive Line, just looking at the because they posted all the data. They post the spin rates, the break, um, the velocity. So like you see all that there. Those are changes that have the potential to be impactful. I mean, again, is is there a high probability? No, I don't. I don't think it's fair to sit here and say, "Yeah, Carlos Grass was making the team out of spring training. He's going to be a great comeback story." Could he be a depth starter? Could he end up being in the bullpen to some extent? Maybe. I mean, I don't, I don't see why not. They definitely need some options out of those two spots at the end of the bullpen. I thought all last year this bullpen needed a a veteran sort of guy. I mean. People are gonna say, "Oh, why not?" You're gonna say Brian Shaw. Brian Shaw. I'm sure Brian Shaw saw Carlos Carrasco getting this deal and called Chris Antonetti and thought, "Where's Where's my deal, man? Why am I not coming back?" Um, because like Scott Barlow, all of his friends, uh, everyone, yeah, Scott, <laughs> the cribbage team for Tito is gone. Yeah, Scott Barlow. It kind of can be serving as that that veteran guy in the bullpen they didn't have last year because he's got more experience than anybody else out there. I don't know. I mean, like I said, like you said, this are we rooting for it to be a good story and for it to work out for Carrasco? Absolutely. But I think there's at least you can look at some of these things from from his pro day drive line, and you look at his changeup from a year ago is still one of his best pitches, and what Cleveland has done with pitching before. And again, the walk rate was was about the worst, of, second worst of his career, but it wasn't absolutely abysmal, you know, relative to the rest. I know, I know. It's higher, it's lower on the, the baseball savant page, but 9.1% to me is not horrible. If you're sticking, I know it's very close to double digits, but it, I don't know. There's a few things there you could reverse and look at. It's again, it's low probability. I know I'm I'm wearing rose colored glasses on this one, definitely influenced by the name, but I don't know. I think up, it's one of those things. Rate up, you... Walk rate up, strikeout rate way down. I mean, I think, like I said, it's, it's very much. Probably spending too much time on a guy who's very unlikely to to spend a lot of time um, with. Also, the there's a chance here in spring training that if he does pitch well for any, you know, whatever happens in spring training, he, for what it's worth, Carl Scrasco has never been a good spring training pitcher. And you can't look at numbers in Arizona and just say, well, he's terrible. Well, he's good. Because there were years where Brian. You can't Shaw, look at that for anyone. Let's be no, honest. not for anybody, but especially pitchers. So, but if there, if anything happens in spring training where he looks really good and Cleveland says, well, we just don't have a spot for you. And I don't know the St. The Louis Cardinals. Of, I'm just, you know, throwing a name mm -hmm. out there say, Hey, we have an opportunity for him. 
Cleveland will trade him. Cleveland will move him because that's what they do for guys. And if they don't feel like they have a spot for him and he's pitching well enough to get a major league opportunity somewhere else, they will move him. But, you know, at least while he's in spring training, he has a chance to to work with some of the younger pitchers and provide something of that value and maybe go to AAA as a depth starter. And if things, you know, if things do come out with the rosier picture, then maybe there's a fun story to be had here. And then before we go to break, see, I think I'll argue that the next person we'll talk about has a much better chance of, of ma- almost a guaranteed chance of making this team. Agreed. I agree. And their 40 man situation is, is really ugly after this off season. Like it's going to be hard to add one, let alone two. You're, you're cutting what like a discussion for another day. Uh, but maybe we'll discuss this in the next part. It's as well as probably the name to know from this weekend. Uh, like who are the names? Who, who do you remove? It's not an easy choice. It's not. All right. We'll talk about the other guy we think is interesting getting invited to spring training and how they're going to make that all work. If you come home and wonder how you're going to make dinner work some nights, I know I, I try to cook on Sundays for the whole week just so I don't have to cook after work every day. Uh, that gets annoying. But there are a lot of options out there you can go to, and why not try Factors? Factors. Uh, ready-to-eat meal delivery service takes the stress out of meal planning, sets you up for success in the new year. You can skip grocery stores, prep work, cooking fatigue, and things we all face after working uh, an eight-hour, maybe even longer day. There are over 35 meals to choose from, including keto options, calorie smart, vegan, veggie, more, and 55 add-ons, ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions for the year. They have two-minute meals to are your secret weapon for the new year. These are restaurant-quality meals delivered to your door with snack options as well, like breakfast, smoothies, juices, snacks to keep you going. Um, cheaper than takeout and more nutritious, more flavorful. These are chef-crafted meals as well that can be delivered right to your door. And if you need something for more of a special occasion, they have a Gourmet Plus option. Um, you can even order four to 18 meals a week, and you can pause and reschedule your deliveries at any time so you don't have to stress over prep work for meals anymore for the week. And like I said, we have protein options, keto options, if that's your thing. Um, everything you need for nutritious eats throughout the week, the ready to eat meals and snacks all week long. Head to factormeals.com slash lockdown MLB 50 and use our code lockdown MLB 50 to get 50% off your orders. That's code lockdown MLB 50 at factormeals.com slash lockdown MLB 50 to get 50% off. All right, Jeff, you feel really good about this other guy we're going to talk about who could make the guardians 40 man roster out of spring training another pitcher yeah sorry i was looking at some factor meals there now after your discussion made me hungry um <laughs> so I, I have kind of a funny story i was covering the my first art article ever back in the day for waiting for next year uh was the double a all-star game where tyler Beatty was there and i can't remember who was supposed to be in the celebrity side of the game but they had a cancellation i remember someone being like we knew that his wife had been a Disney star and they're like, do you think she'd be willing? And uh, someone asked Tyler to, and very graciously, uh, Allie DeBerry is her name. She jumped in. I think it's now, uh, I think she changed her name to, to, uh, to BD, but uh, it was very kind about the whole thing. Gave interviews, talked to everyone. Tyler was great as well. Uh, got to meet them both over that weekend. They're both two very gracious people with a lot of attention focused on them because she was the most famous person there. Um, but uh, in, in, I think probably one of my top five most successful articles ever, which you can't find anymore because this when waiting for next year was a uh, part of um, scout. Uh, she retweeted that with her like hundred thousand followers and that article blew up. And it just, I always think about that from the perspective of someone covering the minors of uh, the funny world and situation. Now we've got that out of the way because you, you got to talk about it. it's interesting. You just don't have a lot of people where the the player is the less successful. You know, this is the uh, you know tonight is the Chiefs game. Like that's that's the other example that comes to mind where the uh, the significant other is is more famous than the athlete. Um, it, it's just not very common. Uh, but Tyler was a first round pick out of high school. He was a first round pick out of college. Went to Vandy. I believe the Blue Jays out of high school failed to sign him. And I pulled out my whole tweet from draft day, which was giant surprise because he had not been super productive at Vanderbilt, did not really develop well. Um, now you're saying, oh, that sounds great. Why do we want him? You know, he moves steadily through the minors, uh, was a high, sc- high school, was a uh, pro teammate with uh, manager Stephen Vogt. 
and was just kind of more of a back end type. Went and pitched in Japan last year. And for a guy who was sitting like 94, he was hitting 97 in Japan. So that's an interesting development. And we already talked about one guy adding a sweeper. Um, Ari Alexander from uh, uh, he's a Fox affiliate in Kansas City who provided most of the information about the signing uh, showed some video that it, uh, Tyler's also working on a sweeper uh, at a place called the Lions Den, not to be confused with that chain in Ohio. Um, but uh, this is some place in Houston. Uh, big guy, strong guy as you know, control is one of those things he's worked on through the years. He has a opt out if he does not make the team and multiple teams were interested. I think this is just, you know, I don't want to say a foregone conclusion, but um, I don't know. Maybe Jose Tana shouldn't be counting his uh, his future in double A or in triple A to start next year. I, I don't know where they're going to find room or um, I'd like, is there anyone they can add to the uh, the disabled list? I can't think of anyone on top of my head. I guess at this, Bino, right, that's the they can flip him if they want to mess with that clock, which is a big debate. But uh, yeah, he's he's got, you know, a good change up uh, fastball has had a good jump. He's working on that sweeper and he's OK in a multi uh, multi-dimensional role starter reliever. I think he makes his team. Vanderbilt pitchers, man, how many how many Vanderbilt pitchers in the major leagues right now do you feel that are really, really good? Like who, who's out there? Well, they they've stopped developing like that's the problem. Like I would not go there as a pitcher because guy, it, it's all turned into Tyler Beads where he's this. The issue we had when he got there is the issue when he left. Chandler Day was an Ohio kid, one of the better prospects in recent prep ranks from Ohio. Same story for him. Um, Tyler Brown, right? The guy we just got from Houston was an Ohio Correct. kid, went to Vandy. And was kind of mostly stuck in a relief role. They've had We're so all many by guys. Jeremy Sowers. <laughs> you know, Jeremy Sowers. I mean, Mason Hickman in system, who, oh. you know, like at the time, I thought Hickman was this fantastic pick. And I, I swung and missed on that because he always had great numbers in college, but he couldn't add any velocity. I'm like, Cleveland's great at adding velocity. You know, it didn't, didn't happen here. But Cleveland, much like their love of Virginia, even though Virginia has a much, much worse developmental history, it's actually not much, much worse when you dig in. Um, I mean, I. Vandy's most productive hitter. Um, can't think who the current guy is from Vandy who's really good. I'm blanking out. But before him, it's not it was day. <laughs> no, it's uh before God, why am I well, really... what about the pitching though? I'm talking about the pitching. I mean, the pitching you... hasn't been great either. Like Hunter no. Owen didn't develop. It's it's a long history of guys who have not developed. Like, who's the guy who's developed for them? I'll, I'll wait. It, it's it's been disappointment after yeah. disappointment after disappointment. And like, for those who are curious to complete my earlier thought, it's like Pedro Alvarez was the most successful Vandy hitter wow. for a very long time. Now there is I'm very excited with that name. <laughs> I'm going to go look up who I cannot think of right now, who is a good hitter from Vandy in the big leagues. That's beside the point, but, but yeah, it's uh they, the development for pitching has been poor. Like there's no other way around it. It has been poor since like that David price, Walker Bueller era era. Yeah, it's it's Walker Bueller has been their best pitcher. That's fair. I mean, he was Be Beatty was 96, 95 when he was in Pro Ball in the majors and Dansby. And that's who I couldn't state side. Oh, Swanson, yeah. Yeah. I mean, in 2021, <clears throat> oh yeah, Brian Reynolds has been pretty obviously pretty good because we wanted him. I mean, he was throwing 95 in 2019. He was throwing 96 in 2022 before he went to Japan. He just has never struck anybody out at the major league level. He's got control issues. And the velocity to me I hasn't really changed much. He was again, he was throwing 95, 96 in, in pro ball over here. And this says he was up to 97 when he was working out for teams in the offseason. That's not really a big deviation from what he well, was he doing was before. At, it said when he was in AAA, he was at 94.6 was the average, and now he's sitting 95, 96. So it is like one to two, which isn't a ton, but I mean every one to two does help. Yeah, I guess I, it depends on where where that one to two sits yeah the sweeper is what's interesting to me the most is adding a pitch because he has not really had a, a good second pitch throughout his career because the as the change up the fastball just hasn't played at all yeah. despite the velocity um so i don't know what the shape looks like cleveland can work with him on the shape of the fastball but the point is like you said other teams have shown interest there were what, what did ari say the padres Houston. the marlins the twins the pirates the yankees and the astros were all interested in, in bd and Cleveland got him, and there's an opt-out. He doesn't make the roster. There's financial incentives if he makes it, starts versus relief appearances. So there's no guarantee what his role is going to be either. So um, that that might be up to determine too. But it makes sense to have him on the roster as 
a fail safe early in the year, see what if anything's there. If nothing's there, you move on. Um, <clears throat> if not, you've uncovered a, a former top prospect who, um, former high draft pick who, you know, has some interesting stuff. And can, it can gives you, you some you want a Jack Leiter or Austin Martin for recent high picks that were successful? I mean, Austin Martin, former successful. former Cleveland draft pick out of high school. So yeah, Ugh. this is why it, I'm. I'm not, this is off topic. I'm not interested in Carter Holton at all. I know people are going to be interested in him. And who's the other Vanderbilt pitcher? I, I'm not so even like, Carter I Holden? haven't spent any time on them because what's the point? Yeah. Like, on a, yeah. I'm, I, that, I know that's terrible to say, but it's like, everyone yeah. is disappointed. Carter Young, the shortstop. I think Spencer Jones Oof. was kind of a disappointment. I know you like him still. And I'm not saying he's like, I'm not saying these guys are toast, but it just has not worked out. Like Kumar Rocker, you know, it's like everyone yeah, is disappointed. JJ Blade. I mean, it just, this is a program. I still like JJ Bleday. Yeah, I'm still you know, stuck we on forget that. that Mike Ushemsky and Tony Kemp, who've turned into solid guys, came out of there. That you had that run where you had Sonny like Gray players. Sonny, I know, yeah, Sonny Gray is a good Sonny example. Sonny Gray sure. and Brian Reynolds and Walker Bueller and Dansby Swanson. That was like the good run. And since then, it's Kyle Wright's your most successful player. I mean, Jordan Sheffield, Ben Bowden. Yeah. All right, we're we're getting off track. With yeah, the it's, I know. I'm not, getting not I'm getting really into well my draft players. nerdedness, but that's the point. It's like. Yeah. I, in some ways, they're the new Florida, right? Maybe Cleveland will be drafting from there because something is <laughs> wrong in the state of uh, of Tennessee. Yeah, real quickly, uh, we'll touch on a couple of guys that are going to spring training, and we'll, we'll get into more detail on them in just a second. But uh, Franco Aleman, Jaime Berea, who was already signed to a minor league deal um, earlier this offseason, he's coming to spring training. Tanner Burns, we've talked about him plenty. Uh, we'll talk about him maybe a little bit more. He's coming to spring training. I don't know what the deal is there. Um, Carlos Carrasco, Tyler Beatty is there now. Uh, Car- Nick Enright, who we've talked about before on the show, he's got the major league invite to spring training. That's good. Anthony Goes, who I think we should spend some more time on at some point because there's some interesting connections here to the minor leaguers that he, that he has that I wasn't aware of previously. Adam Aller, they signed. Uh, catchers, Michael Berglund, Brian Lavastina, Eric Rodriguez, knew lots of catchers in spring training. Infield, Raynal Magado, Scott Manzara, who we're going to talk about in just a second. Mike Caprice, who was invited last year. Daniel Schneeman, who was had a good, I'm surprised he's still with his organization. He's yeah, I, there. Lorenzo well. Cedrola is uh, was a minor league uh, free agent signing over the weekend. He's coming to spring training. Nice and then Petey Halpin, everybody's everyone's favorite prospect, Petey Halpin, is coming to spring training. We'll talk about a couple of those guys. We'll talk about Kyle Manzardo in just a moment. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. Uh, I don't know. I always love the commercials. That is still uh, the one thing that is is always a fun time. And I don't know. As a kid, I was I didn't get a lot of treats and snacks, but that was the time where I get it. And I, for some reason, licorice was one of those things I would get around the Super Bowl as a kid. I love. Listen, I like black licorice. I am a fan of all types of licorice. Justin is, is leaving right now. Um, but Ooh, that is worse than your eggnog take. Oh, uh, wow. no. Yeah. Give me black licorice all day long. Uh, so I snacks, commercials, uh, sad about the Lions. That is where my view is on the Super Bowl. And FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a win or two or three. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but they also have bets for who will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers join today and you get $200 in bonus bets if your first. Bet of five dollars or more wins. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports par- book partner of the NFL. All right. So we'll c- talk about a couple of the spring training invites here in just a second, but we probably should do a quick uh note on Kyle Manzardo. So we probably spend more time on this actually. If you haven't been paying attention to prospect lists. There's you a couple top to. 100s out. Yeah, there's, um, here's the three that you need to pay attention to for. Like, again, these are all subjective. Even our lists are subjective, right? That's how these things work. But the prospect promotion incentive that Major League Baseball is doing where if a player wins Rookie of the Year, he's on the open day roster, and he's a top 100 prospect by these three outlets, the team gets a, a first-round pick. It happened for um, the Mariners with Willie Rodriguez. Seattle and Baltimore. <clears throat> Yeah, and then Baltimore last year with their last year with uh, Gunnar Henderson. Kyle Manzardo did not make Baseball America's top 100. He is on MLB Pipeline's top 100. ESPN is the is the third outlet you have to pay attention to for this 
and theirs is not out yet. It's just Kylie McDaniel. That's the only person. Um, if he makes power. Kylie McDaniel's top 100, then Manzardo and Cleveland would be eligible for that rookie of the year draft pick between the first and second round um, for the before the comp round, actually. If he won rookie of the year and he's on the open day roster, if Kyle Manzardo does not make Kylie McDaniel's list, which I'm going to say, Based on what I know about Kyle McDaniel's rankings, I have a feeling Kyle Manzardo is not making his top 100. We'll see. I, I just feel like that's not the kind of player he values. Then Cleveland can't get a draft pick if he wins rookie of the year for being on the open day roster, which significantly changes how they might view him going into spring training. Like that, that may say, okay, if he is not eligible to bring a, an extra draft pick if he wins rookie of the year, then why should we have him on the open day roster? So let's not forget, Kyle Manzardo. Is not currently on the 40. Jeff just talked about how they're going to get Tyler Beatty on the 40 man roster. He's got an opt out, so he's in a minor league deal. So if they want to add him, they got to bring somebody off. How are they going to get Kyle Manzardo on the roster? Um, so if he doesn't make Kyle McDaniel's top 100 and he is not um, eligible to help Cleveland bring a draft pick in by being on the open day roster, they're not going to force it. They're they're going to leave him in AAA. I, I 100% believe that right now. I, and I'll, I'll be happy to be wrong because he should be on the open day roster. He is. As the roster is currently constructed, he is one of your 26 best players. He is absolutely one of your 12 best hitters, without a doubt. One of your best five hitters, probably. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll gladly be 100% wrong if he doesn't make Kylie's top 100 and he is on the opening day roster regardless. But I'll believe it when I see it because they have no incentive. They have a 40-man roster situation right now they're already dealing with. They've got a rule five pick they're trying to hang on to possibly. Florio's got no options. They have the BD situation now. They're probably going to be interested in to see what he does in spring training. I don't know how it's going to work. And I mean, and again, roster resource isn't perfect, but they don't have David Fry in the 40 man roster. And I think David Fry deserves a spot in this roster. He's useful right now for them. So <laughs> I don't see Kyle Manzardo making the roster on opening day if he is not on the ESPN top 100. And even if he does, I don't think there's a 100% chance he makes it either because. The thing we see about service time most, Jeff, I think is teams game service time for top, for, for like young prospects, like Francisco Lindor types, right? Gunnar Henderson types, the guys who are high school picks that are super young, that can reach free agency at, at an early age. <clears throat> you're trying to push their timeline back. Don Manzardo is not exactly that. He's a college hitter who's a first baseman. He's not like an elite prospect. So those are the guys who usually have their service time gamed, not not Manzardo. They didn't do it with Quan. You know, Quan's not a guy they were concerned about with hitting for agency because he was a college player and he's not an elite he has prospect. No, no power too, which often drives uh, arbitration value. Uh, you know, I or think just up, up up the middle superstar like Francisco Linder was a superstar. They yes. gamed his service time. Manzardo is not that same prospect. Those are the kind of guys mm -hmm. you usually do this to. So. Unless you think he's going to hit for power, then he's going to get, I mean, look at, I'm not, he's not Pete Alonso, but look at Pete Alonso. Like if a guy is a power hitting first baseman, they'll find their way into power. Um, and Pete Alonso was a power hitting first baseman college hitter who, you know, it, it again, I'm not saying he's going to be that. Uh, I would never put that comp on anyone, but there, I, I still think there's a world where they sign someone. You know, we were discussing this beforehand. I still think we're seeing some of these DH first base types. They're going to be super cheap uh, relative to production. And especially if they're not going to get anything for Manzardo, you can, and one can make a case for him. I know I see a lot of people being like, you know, they're not serious if they don't call Manzardo up. It's like, yeah, he's great in the AFL, but you know what? So is everyone. The AFL isn't exactly guaranteed. You know, Jose Tina won a batting title there. Uh, and he might be the first guy off this 40 man. Uh, the other side of it is like he had an up and down year because he had a he had an injury. He had off the field stuff with his family going on. He did not really excel through the whole year. And there's reasons for that. And that's why you and I are still very high on him. But I don't think it's a sign of like terrible management if they decide not to run him out there, if they just want to see more consistency because consistency was not there. That's all fair. I still think, again, I still think he's one of your best 26 players, but that doesn't always mean he's the best fit for your roster right now. And that, and not, and being one of your 26 best players could also mean there are open spots in your roster that need improvement yeah. first. And he necessarily shouldn't be. Uh, and we thought that would have been quick, Will Brennan. It's it, nothing's a guarantee, right? Yeah. Real quickly, minor league coaching assignments, just some ones that were notable. 
Um, Andrew Moore is a former uh, high pick in the majors. Second or rounder. High, uh, second rounder. He is now Columbus' assistant pitching coach. It's his first year coaching, first year at the organization. Oregon State uh, guy. We know they do yeah, like guy, that program. Guy I liked in the minor leagues. The minor manager, he was the captain's manager for two years, Greg Desenzo. He's managing double A with Rugo Sodor moving up to the majors. He was um, formerly the cap, yeah, captain's manager. He was assistant. He was the bench coach for AAA last year. Cody Buckle takes over as pitching coach in Akron for Brad Goldberg. Uh, the assistant hitting coach at AA in Akron is Amanda Kamakona. She's the only, I think, female hitting or female coach in the system. So good for her. We'll see what she can do. Uh, former uh, minor leaguer for Cleveland, Shane McCarthy. Uh, he is now the ACL pitching coach. Good for him. And then uh, the bench coach out in ACL is Andrew Romine, former uh, major leaguer, probably more notably known as uh, Austin Romine's brother. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, you know, it's, it's always interesting to see who they add and where they put them and how they're going to deploy them. Uh, I just want to throw back for one second and mention, I know I had people ask me about Lorenzo Sudrola. Yes, he is right-handed. No, there is no power. He is there because last year they had to play guys out of position. He gives them outfield depth. Um, He's don't a expect much. Center fielder. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't expect much with that. Um, coaching wise, I'll be curious to see, uh, you know, just how so have we move guys around. Way. You know, it's always interesting to see the the promotion of players and of coaches as well as players, seeing how they kind of value who and what and in what situations. Um, yeah, it, it's that's definitely something to check out. I am sad Shane McCarthy never got a chance. I know he got hurt, but I, I would have liked to have seen him at least get a game in the big leagues. I always guys like that who are so fringe, but like if Tanner He's totally made it, too. I thought for sure he would have at least gotten that, that inning, that, that rep. Um, but I think McCarthy's that's a good addition. Gave a, gave a lot back to charity and yes. cancer too. Uh, um, some good shows coming up this week for you. We got, let's make a deal at the AL East. That's our final. Let's make a deal show. Finally. I don't, I think we're ready for that to end mailbag show Friday. Give us some questions on YouTube. Uh, hit us on Twitter, wherever we got mailbag coming on Friday. So hit us with uh, questions there. We'll do a prospect tool draft. We got our prospect draft, prospect rankings, more draft content coming. And finally, sometime in spring training, we'll catch up with our buddy, Andre Knott. Yeah, we have a few other guests as well. We will eventually get to reveal those. But thank you for joining us. Remember, rate and review, download daily. It helps be an everydayer uh, like our friend Joshua Farrell. And thank you for listening. And go, go, 